In this video, we're going to take a look at interpolation. Now, if we are working with data in a grouped frequency table, we can use a technique called interpolation. And this allows us to estimate the median, quartiles, and percentiles. You should also be aware that when you are using interpolation, you are assuming that the data values are evenly distributed within each class. Now, in terms of the method here for interpolation, I think the best way to explain this and to demonstrate this is to just run through a practice question. So let's just do that here for interpolation. So we just take a look then at one practice question here for interpolation. So for this question here, we're looking at the number of hours worked in a given week, and this is recorded for 50 employees with the results summarized in the table below. So we can see the results in this table here. And we've got three parts to this question, part A, part B, and part C. And what we can see then is for part B and part C, that's where we're using interpolation, okay? So we'll come to those parts in a moment. But let's begin with part A then. So for part A, hopefully nice and straightforward here. This should remind you somewhat of some of the questions you might have had at GCSE Math. So we just need to identify the median class. So we've got data in a group frequency table here. So the median then, remember that's the halfway point for the data. So if we've got 50 values, the median would be 50 divided by two. So it would be the 25th value. Okay, so the median here, let's just make a note of this. So the median is equal to the 25th value. Okay, so what we need to consider here then is for each respective class interval here, if we keep going cumulatively, where does the 25th value fall? Okay, which class interval does it fall within? Well, within the first class interval here, we have four values. If we keep going then, in the second class interval, there's eight values. So in the first two class intervals, we have 12 values. So obviously we need to keep going here until we get to the 25th value. So within the next class interval, we've got six values. So in total for the first three, we have 18. Six plus eight plus four gives me 18 there. So then for the fourth class interval here, we have 14 values. So for the first three, make a note of this here, we have 18 values. So in that case then, for the fourth one, if we have 14 values in total then, the cumulative um, sum here, that would be 18 plus 14, and that would give me 32 values. So what that tells us then is we know the median must fall within this class interval here. Okay, so the median class in that case then is 26 to 30. Let's make a note of that here. Therefore, the median class, the median class is equal to 26 to 30. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to part A, hopefully nice and straightforward. So now let's take a look then at the key parts of this video, which is interpolation. So for part B then, we wanna now use interpolation to find the median. Now remember, this is just an estimate, it's not an exact answer. It does just give us an estimate, but we wanna estimate the median here. So how do we do this using interpolation? Well, the way that interpolation works is we use proportion to estimate what we need. In this case, Q2, which is the median. So what I'm gonna do here to begin with is I'm gonna draw a scale. Okay, so I'm going to draw a scale here. And what we know is we know the median lies within 26 to 30. Okay, it lies between 26 to 30. Okay, so if we consider the class boundaries, just like we would for a histogram, the lower class boundary would be 25.5. So that's 25.5. And then for the upper class boundary, that would be 30.5. So we've got 30.5 there, okay? And somewhere between these two values here, like we said, the median lies between these two values. So I'm gonna call this Q2 here. I'm gonna put it, say, somewhere in the middle. It might not exactly be in the middle here, but let's just say it's somewhere like that, okay? So that's Q2, the median. That's what we wanna to solve to find. And what we've also got here is the respective frequencies, okay? The respective values. So for the lower class boundary of 25.5, well, that would take me to this class interval here. Okay, so what's the sum of the frequencies at that point? Well, four plus eight plus six, like we can see here, that's 18. So my lower class boundary, the frequency at that point is 18. So that's the 18th value. We'll come back to Q2 in a moment. For 30.5 then, well, we keep going here, that would be the next class interval. So that's gonna be 18 plus 14, so that would be 32. 
So that's the values at that point, the cumulative value anyway. And then for Q2, well, that's the median. And like we identified for part A, that's a 25th value. Okay, so for Q2, that's going to be 25 underneath. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we just form some equations here. So how do we do this? Well, what I do is I consider the, consider the distance here, or the difference then, from Q2 to 25.5. So I've got Q2 minus 25.5. I'm going to divide this then by the total distance here. So 30.5 minus 25.5. So I divide it by that. So this is divided by 30.5 minus 25.5. Like so. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this equal then. And we now repeat this here with the frequencies. So it's going to be equal to 25 minus 18. Just like we did for Q2 minus 25.5. So 25 minus 18. And that's all over then. 32 minus 18. The total distance here. So 32 minus 18. Okay. And from here, then, it's just a matter of simplifying and solving for Q2, the medium. So straight away, I can simplify this denominator here. So 30.5 minus 25.5, that would be 5. So I've got Q2 minus 25.5. That's all over 5. And that's equal then. Well, 25 minus 18 is 7. 32 minus 18 is 14. So here I've got 7 over 14, which is equal to a half. That's equal to 1 over 2. So now I can times through both sides by 5. That would get rid of this denominator here of 5. We've got Q2 minus 25.5 is equal then to 5 times a half. So that's 5 over 2. And then finally, we just want Q2 here. And I need to add 25.5 to both sides. So therefore, Q2 is equal to 25.5 plus 5 over 2 and that's equal to 28 okay like like we said just remember this is an estimate it's not an exact answer but that would be our estimate there for the median for part b so we've used linear interpolation there to estimate the medium so that's how we use interpolation so now we're going to repeat this here to find the upper quartile for part C. So let's see if we've got enough room to do that over here. We might need a little bit extra room, um, but we'll clear that when we get to it. So we now need to identify where the upper quartile lies. So Q3 then, that's the upper quartile. That's going to be equal to 50 because we've got 50 values here. We times that by 3 and then we divide that by 4. So I've got 50 times by 3 divided by 4. So that's 150 divided by 4. So that's the 37 and a half value. So 37.5, 37 and a half value there. So now we need to keep going here until we identify which class interval the upper quartile lies within. So at this point here, we know this was 32 values up to the fourth class interval. So clearly the 37 and a half value must lie within this class interval here. Okay. So the upper quartile then lies within this class interval here. So we know it's going to lie between 31 and 40. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this process then. I'm going to start by drawing my scale here. Right, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but just so you can kind of see what you're working with. So like we said then, it's going to be 31 and 40. Okay, so this is the one. Let's highlight this here. And up to this point then we had, so that was 32. It's 32 values and then plus 16, and that would give us 48 there. Okay. So start with the class boundaries. So I've got 31 and 40. So my lower class boundary would be 30.5. We're going to get 30.5 there. And then for the upper class boundary here, that would be 40.5. Okay. And then somewhere in the middle here, might not be exactly in the middle, but let's say somewhere in the middle here, we're going to get Q3, the upper quartile. Okay. What we also need here, like we saw for part B, was the respective frequencies or values at these class boundaries. So for the lower class boundary then, 30.5, that's going to 
that was 32. That took us to this class interval here. So that's 32. And then for the upper class boundary here, that would be 48. So that's going to be 48 there. And then what about Q3 here? Well, that would be 37.5. It's the 37.5 value there. So 37.5. So we've got everything that we need here now to form our equations here. So we just repeat this process like we saw then here. So I'm going to get Q3. So I get Q3 minus 30.5. We then divide this here by the total along the top. So 40.5 minus 30.5. 40.5 minus 30.5. There. And that is equal to, so we just repeat this here now with the frequency, so 37.5 minus 32 minus 32 there, and that's all over 48 minus 32. So 48 minus 32 there. So from here, we now just need a bit of room to obviously um, simplify and solve for Q3. So I'm just going to um, erase some of this here for part B. If you do need it, obviously just pause the video now, just take notes here of what we've got. But if not, I'm just going to quickly get rid of this. Just so I've got enough room, obviously, to answer part C. I don't need too much more, I don't think, than this. So let me just get rid of the last bit as well for part B. Right, so for part C then, let's just finish this off. Let's do it up here. If we simplify this then, I get Q3 minus 30.5. We can't do anything with the numerator just yet. 40.5 minus 30.5, that's 10. Okay, so this is all over 10. That's all over 10. Now this is going to be equal then. I've got 37.5 minus 32. And that's all over 48 minus 32. So if you simplify here the right-hand side of this equation, we get 11 over 32. So that's equal to 11 over 32 there in its simplest form. So from here then, what I'm going to do now is times through by 10. So I times through by 10 here, I get Q3 minus 30.5 is equal to, so that would be 110 over 32. I'm keeping everything in its exact form as it is here. Obviously, you don't need to write everything out like this. You could just go straight into Q3 here is equal to 30.5 um, plus 10 times 11 over 32. That's fine as well. I just want to write down all the steps just so you can see clearly what we've done here. And then finally, Q3 here, the upper quartile, that's equal to 30.5 plus 110 plus 110 over 32 there. Okay, so put that into your calculator here, and if you do this correctly, what you should find then for our estimate here for the upper quartile is we get 33.9. Okay, so Q3 there, and there we have it. Now, obviously, you can kind of give your answers a quick, like, common sense check here. Obviously, if I get something crazy that doesn't even fall within this class interval, say 50, which would fall within this class interval here, I know something's, you know, obviously not gone quite right here. Um, so it should make sense within terms of the class intervals and obviously where the frequencies lie. Um, so obviously just set that into account. Um, obviously if I get a value, say 100, I doesn't even lie within these um, class intervals here. Again, something's gone wrong. So just give you answer a quick common sense check, make sure everything seems sensible. But there we have it. So that's our answer there to part C. That's the upper quartile. And that brings us to the end of this video on interpolation.